Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Today, if you have your Bibles, I want to turn to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29. Proverbs 15 and 29. And while you're turning, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to stand in your house and to deliver your word. Lord, I ask that you would speak through me this morning. I ask, Lord God, that this would be a message from you, not a message that I have prepared. Father, I ask that you wash me white as snow in this church. Lord, that you would forgive me of each and every sin. And Lord God, I pray that this will be the whole prayer of the whole congregation. Lord, I ask that we could come to you in mercy and grace this morning, that you would show us your goodness. And I thank you for it. Lord, I ask that you would watch over your word and that you would perform it in us today. Lord, let your Holy Spirit move. Lord, let your Holy Spirit move and start right here in the altar and move to the back door. Lord God, I pray that we would move out of here different today, that we would walk out of here new, Father, and renewed. Lord, I ask that you would touch our hearts, that you would prick our hearts. I ask, Lord God, that you would renew our minds, that you would give us a mind like Christ Jesus. Lord, that we could bring every thought under subjection to you. Lord, I ask that you would send your angels to minister to us this morning. Lord, I come against any block that would hinder the spirit. I come against anything this morning that would hinder our lives spiritually from the things of God. And Lord, I ask that you would send your comforter to help us when we need help. And Lord, when we can't stand on our own, that you would hold us up. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, Proverbs 15 and 29, say amen if you got it. Amen. 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 The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Amen. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuses instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Now I want to read that one more time because it's so good. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's have a good time this morning. I want y'all to smile and, and be happy. Okay? Can we be happy today? Amen. 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 All right. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Now this morning, I want to tell you how good God is. Amen. I want to tell you how good he's been in my life. I want us to remember where he's brought us from. Amen. I want us to remember where he's taken us to. Amen. Come on. You say, well, where is he taking us? He's taken us to a land where we'll never die. Yeah. He's, he's taken us to a land where we'll be with him throughout eternity. On, he's taken us to a land where we're going to be together. Come on, y'all. Amen. 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 We're going to be together Amen. forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. <laughs> and we're going to have us a good time. Amen. So why not start practicing right now? Amen. Come on. Let's practice having a good time here at Bethel Bible Church this Sunday morning. Okay, can we do that? Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah to the Lamb of God yes. who brought us out of sin and iniquity. Come amen. On. The Word of God says the Lord is far from the wicked. Far from the wicked. Now, a lot of times in our lives we've heard people say that God loves us. And he does. But he's far from the wicked this morning. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand that a wicked man or a wicked woman is against everything God stands for. And he isn't 
going to be abiding. He's not going to fellowship with wickedness. Amen? Come on, y'all. No sin is going to enter in. The Holy Spirit won't abide in the unclean temple. And the word of God says that the Lord is far from the wicked. Yeah. You know, in our country now, we have all kind of wickedness running around. Yeah. We've got some stuff going on in our country now that is, is it's terrible. Amen? And the bad part about it is they think they're all right with God. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. <laughs> we think that when we live a wicked lifestyle, that it's okay and God is still there because he loves us. Yeah. That's not what the word of God says. He said he loved the world so much that he sent his only son. He didn't say he loved the sin. That's right. Come on, church. That's right. He didn't say that he was close to the wicked. He sent his son that we could believe on him so we should not perish. But if we don't believe on him, he's far from the wicked this morning. Let me Come on. I don't want to hear that. Come on. No. We don't want to hear that, do we? We don't want to hear that God is far from the wicked. We always think that God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Well, the word of God says that he's far from the wicked. He's not close to the man or the woman who's caught up in sin. Is it his fault? No, it's yours. That's right. It's our fault. See, I don't want to be in fellowship with a bunch of heathens. Amen. Amen. Me being the preacher, I can't run around and have a good time with everybody else in what they're doing. Amen? Because I'm supposed to be set apart. I'm supposed to be a righteous man. I'm supposed to be a, a standard in my life that is showing to the ones around me to show the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ and his love. Amen? So we know that the Lord is not close to the wicked this morning. I said the Lord is not close to the wicked. How can these people doing all these things in our country? Come on. With pride. Man, it, you can hear a pin dropping here. <laughs> and all the things that's going on, and they're proud of it. And preachers are preaching that it's okay to be a gay or lesbian and things that's going on, and they still think that they're close to God. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand that. How can you be close to God when you're living a sin lifestyle? And it's not just them, it's everyday church people. We drinking, we smoking, we doing things that ain't right. We running with women, women running with men, and we think we're so close to God. Yeah. But it says that God is far from the wicked. And if you're caught up in those things this morning, he's not going to be close to you because you don't love righteousness. You love darkness rather than light. This is a hard message, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. But there's a good side to it. Come on, y'all. This is the shouting part, all right? The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Amen. Oh, come on, church. Amen. I said he heareth the prayer of the righteous. I want you to know that my God still hears and he still answers prayer. Amen. I said he still hears and he still answers prayer. And when you live your life as a righteous man or a righteous woman, he's going to incline his ear to you and everything that you ask him, everything that you plead to him, he hears it and he's going to perform it in your life. Amen. I'm going to give you a prime example. And you might not think it's a very big thing, but I think it's a major thing. And I work for the post office, amen? I'm an RCA, a substitute. And a few weeks ago, they started a Sunday Amazon hub where you have to run packages on Sunday. And all the RCAs are required to go. You have to. It's no ifs, ands, or buts. Well, I'm a preacher, y'all. That's right. Amen? Come on. Come on. And I went in there and I told her, I said, I'm not going over there on Sunday and working. I don't care if you got to write me up. I don't care if I got to get a lawyer. But I'm going to fight this tooth and nail and I'm going to stand on the word of God and what's right. And it's not right for us to go have to go over there and do that, especially right. when you're a preacher. That's right. Amen. I turned in a note from Bethel Bible Church that says that I'm the preacher. Come on, y'all. Yep. We notarized it. The postmaster called me in the other day. And this has been about a month or two. Amen. 
and she give me a paper and she says, it says on the paper, you will not be forced to work on Sunday so you can fulfill your duties at Bethel Bible Church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Now you say, is that a praise? I say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I'm happy about that thing. Why? Because I want to preach. And I want you to hear the word of God. And I want to do it without fear, favor, or compromise. And I want to live my life righteous. No matter what stands up in front of us, we got to know that God is still on our side. He hears my prayers. He hears your prayers, Brother Rayford. He hears your prayers, Joey. When we do the right things and we live the right lifestyle in front of others uh, and integrity when we're alone, yes. God hears our prayers. You say, well, it's easy to be a, a Christian on Sunday. It is. You get in the house of God and everybody's got their nice clothes on and we all smiling, or you should be smiling anyway. And we come here to preach or preach. And we're in fellowship with our brothers and sisters and we're eating casseroles and talking about good times. It's easy to do the right thing. But what about when you're alone? Come on, preach on me. I'm talking about when you all by yourself. Come on. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about when the wife ain't around. Come on. Or when the husband ain't around. Or when mama and daddy ain't there. What are we doing? Come on. Are we living our lives in integrity? Are we, are we people that are righteous even when the doors are shut? Come on, y'all. When the blinds are pulled together, are we living righteous life? A lot of times we don't, and then we pray, and we wonder why God isn't answering our prayers because we stumbled. It's time we get right. It's time we come together in unity. It's time we live our lives righteous as righteous Christians. I don't want to be a heathen. I don't want to do unclean things. I want to live my life to the glory of Jesus Christ. And when I pray, I, when I, pray I want him to hear that prayer. Amen. But you know what? You got you to gotta say something for him to hear. Yeah. Amen? Amen? This is the part where I'm going to preach on prayer again. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> If I asked you right now how many minutes you prayed yesterday, what would you say? I've been telling these, these boys in our Sunday school class, I've been telling them you need to pray at least 15 minutes a day out loud. Yeah. At least 15 minutes a day. Yesterday, did you pray 15 minutes a day? Did you do it? How long did you watch TV? How long did we scroll through Facebook? You say, you said this a lot of times. Well, I'm going to keep on saying until something changes. That's right. Amen? Amen? I'm going to keep on saying the same thing. I'm going to keep on preaching prayer. I'm going to keep on preaching love. I'm going to keep preaching against sin. I'm not going to let up. I'm never going to sit down. I'm going to stay on you. And I'm going to tell you, hey, you need to be doing this. And if not, you're going to fall out of the will of God. And God is not close to a wicked man. He is not close to a wicked woman. And he will not hear your prayer if you're living your life in sin. The only prayer he'll hear if you're living your life in sin is one of redemption. Is one of forgiveness. Amen. 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 But we sure do roll out our list for God, don't we? Yeah. Lord, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to protect my kids. I want you to bless this one. I want you to bless that one. I want you to help us in financially. I want you to put $100 million in a bank account. I want you to do this. I want you to give me uh, some, some brand new boots. And we got all this list of things that we got want for him to do, but we can't even spend 15 minutes a day talking to him. We can't live our lives in integrity when no one else is around. How do we expect God to hear and answer our prayer if we don't even talk to him? We don't pray. I want you to think about something. All right, tonight, when you leave this church this evening, what if you start preparing your heart for next Sunday? What if this Sunday morning, when you walk through the door, you was prayed up? What if starting this Sunday, when you leave here, you start preparing your heart 
And you say, Lord, when we show up back in that church on Sunday morning and all those people, all these saints of God get together, Lord, I want your glory to show up at the altar. That we don't come just to hear the preacher. We don't come to eat a casserole. We didn't come to be seen. But we're coming to see you and your glory in our lives and in our church. And we start preparing our hearts right now for the following Sunday. And we come in here next Sunday all prayed up and praying every day for the service. What if we would pray for the preacher? How long have you spent in prayer for me this week? Or daddy. Come on, let's get real. I need your prayers. You need my prayers. We need each other. I need you to pray for me. What if you would pray that I would get up here and preach without fear, favor, or compromise? That I would have no pride in my preaching? Come on, y'all. That I'd be willing to do it in the spirit and that the same prayer would be for the congregation. What if we would do that? What if we would do it? Come on, y'all. What if you would pray for it? Imagine the service that we'd have next Sunday. Amen. What if you spent an hour of your day praying for the church? We'd see some things happen. We'd see our lost loved ones come in. If we had every family member that is represented in this place right now, I'm talking about all your uncles that ain't here, all your cousins, all your brothers, all your sisters, your mamas and daddies, your husbands, your kids, your wives. If we had every one of our families in this church this morning, we'd have them packed out of the house and they'd be standing in line to get in here. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't come because we're not praying like we should. They don't come because the power of God and the glory is not in the church like it should be. Now, you saying you preaching against Bethel Bible Church? No, I love you, and I love this church, but I want to see it grow. Amen. I want to see more. I want to see God do more. I want to see us give ourselves to God more. See, God poured out everything that he had for us on the cross. He gave us salvation. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the gifts. He gives us love, joy, and compassion. He gives us all that things. He's given us everything that he has to give us. It's us uh, that have not given ourselves to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart. When I first got saved, I had a light in my eye. Amen. And I remember... The days that I spent before I got saved. I remember the darkness that was over my life. I remember the things that I've done. I, I remember them vividly. And I'm ashamed of the time that I've wasted when I could have been doing the things of God. But once I come to God and I realized Him and I, I had an experience with Him personally, not nanny's experience, not daddy's experience, not papa's experience, but my own experience. When he showed up to me personally and saved my soul, I had a light inside. And us as Christians, we've lost that light in our eyes. It says that the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. When you see something and it sparks in you, come on. When I see a spark in you, that brings, that brings joy to my heart. Come on, y'all. This is a different message this morning, but it's one we need to hear. We've lost that light. Amen? We've lost the light in our eyes. We've lost the fire in our eyes. I remember my granddaddy used to get up here and he'd preach and he'd spit and he'd have that fire in his eyes. I want the fire in my eyes. I want you to have the fire in your eye. I want you to have that love and that joy and that peace in your heart. When David Grove stood and preached, I'm sure that he had fire in his eyes. This morning as I stand, I want to have the fire of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to have righteousness encamped around me with a coat from the mantle of God. Amen. Amen. The eyes rejoice with the heart. And a good report maketh the bones fat. 
a good report. We quick to say what's wrong, Wolf of Sam. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Well, I've had this Hello. happen, and this is going on. And you know, my great granny used to be like that. She'd tell you about every stabbing, every shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you get around her, and everything she said was just negative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't want to be around nobody like that. I ain't got time for that. I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't even watch the news anymore. Oh. Nanny was telling me some about some stuff that was going on on the news the other day. I said, look, I don't care. I love you, but I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Amen? Right. I don't want to hear. I want to hear some good reports. Yeah. I, want to, I want to hear how Jesus Christ come in and saved your soul. I want to hear how you've been preaching to the ones around you and you're bringing them to the house of God. I want to hear how you had trials and temptations, but God intervened and he heard your righteous cry and he, he reached down and he pulled you through and he gave you the victory over that thing. I want to hear some good reports. Amen. I come by the church to tell you this morning a good report. You say, what is it? I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been transformed I've been renewed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to the... Y'all don't want to hear this. Amen. Preach on. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. <laughs> huh? What's it done for you? Where's that light at? Where's that light at? Where's the light? Come on. Where's the light? Look at what all he's kept us from. Look at where all he's brought us from. Look at what he's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to do some stuff. If you'd allow him to do it. Amen? Amen. It makes the bones fat. You ever heard that saying? Well, she's just big boned. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't never heard that. Come on, come on. My, my other granny used to say, well, she's real pretty in the face. <laughs> In other words, she was big bone. <laughs> well, a good report makes the bones fat. Amen. 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 When you hear good things, don't it do something to your soul? When you come to church and you see somebody that's fired up for God, and you see God moving in their lives, and you see things happening, don't that give you joy in your heart? Yeah. Don't that make you happy when, when your children are doing right? Come on, y'all. Don't it make you happy when you see your brothers and sisters in Christ growing in the Lord? It makes me happy. Amen. This morning, DJ taught Sunday school. You say that make you happy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, it did. Yes. Why? Because I'm seeing people and we're changing lives. Come on. I said we're changing lives. You're either changing them for the good or you're changing them for the bad. How are you Im impacting people's lives this morning? Amen. Amen. When I look at these young boys, I see potential. Amen. 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 I don't care what they done last night. Right. I don't care what you done last night. Right. I care about today and tomorrow. I care about when we hear that sound that they're going to be with me in the kingdom of heaven. Right. I care about when Jesus Christ shows up in glory, then we're all going to fly out of here together in one mind and one accord. What if it happened right now? Would you be ready? I know one thing, you wouldn't be ready to shout on the streets of glory because you ain't shouting now. <laughs> I want you to know one thing. We got a choice this morning. We can meet Jesus Christ right here in the glory, but we can meet him there in the judgment. Come on. That's right. It's your choice. You can choose to praise God. We learned about the Battle of Jericho this morning. And they shouted and got the victory. Amen. Amen. I said they shouted and they got the victory. Amen? Amen. What if we shout a little this morning? What if you get out your comfort zone and shout a little bit? Faye Dawson's here. She shout a little bit. Yeah. Come on, y'all. What if you just stood up and give God a good shout this morning? Yeah. You shout at everybody else, your husband and your wife. <laughs> Amen? Come on. Preach we do. We do a lot of shouting in our lives, but it's not the right kind. My granddaddy used to say, if you got a stain in your underwear, you put it over your head and shout it out. I probably shouldn't have told that, but I did. Come on, y'all. 
Why can't we shout for the Lord? Where's that light in our eyes? Where's that joy in our hearts? We're here. It's a beautiful day. You're beautiful. Come on. Or you used to be. Yeah. Amen. You're beautiful this morning. Jesus loved you so much that he died for you. We should have a shout in our lives this morning. You should have a song in your soul. It says, The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. I know there was a time in my life when I didn't want to hear anything good about God or, or any wise counsel. Amen? That's right. Because I was a fool. <laughs> and I was hanging out with fools. And I wouldn't ever be nothing but a fool if I, if I kept to acting like that. But see, when you come in and God renews you, you want to understand. See, I never used to like to read. Now I love to read. You say, what do you read? I read the Word of God. Amen. I read Christian books. I read things that's going to help me, amen, uh, for a counsel. I've called different people and talked to different ministers. And I used to call Rayford every Saturday. And we talked for two, three hours on the phone. Why? Because I wanted his counsel. I wanted his understanding. I go to Nanny's in the morning. I drink coffee with her and talk about life and talk about God. Why? Because I want to hear the things of God. I want to hear good counsel. I want to be wise as a leader. So I find wise leaders to talk to. Come on. Amen. I don't hang around a bunch of fools. A lot of us, we hang around a bunch of fools, don't we? Boys, come on, y'all. Y'all old folks, y'all hang around a bunch of fools. Old folks would be fools too down That's at the right. dance That's hall right. and running around and having crazy. You know, going down to bingo and having a mixed drink. <laughs> Amen. Come on, it ain't just the young ones, it's the old ones too. We gotta get right, y'all. He said that he is far from the wicked, but he hear the prayer of the righteous. He that refuseth instruction despiseth, despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. We hard-headed. You want to know how I know? Because I've been preaching on prayer for 15 minutes a day for the last year or two, and we still ain't praying 15 minutes a day. You know why? Because you're hard-headed. Because I'm hard-headed. We hard-headed Christians. And when you get a hard head, your heart starts to harden. And when you get a hard heart, you start in wicked ways. And when you become a wicked man or a wicked woman, God is far from you. But he didn't move, you did. That's right. We hard headed. Why can't we pray? We're too busy. Why can't we read the word? You too busy? You too busy for God? That's what you're saying? It ain't got nothing to do with me. Your prayer life ain't going to hurt me any, but my prayer life will. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. If you ain't praying, that's not going to hurt my soul. Because I want you to know I'm praying. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for this church. I'm praying for the youth. I'm praying for the outside of the church to come in and want to hear the things of God. I'm praying for souls. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here it reproof giveth understanding. And look at 33. It says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. That's the whole problem in our whole country. We don't fear God. The church doesn't fear God. You know why? Because we're caught up in every sin under the sun. Amen? We don't fear God. You don't fear God. If you did, you wouldn't do those things. If you fear God, you'd be at church every Sunday. If you fear God, you'd be at church on Wednesday night. If you fear God, you'd be praying and talking to Him. If you fear God, you'd be praying and reading your Bible. And you'd be telling the ones around us, Hey, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. And He wants you to come in and, and serve Him. We watch everything else talking about fear. Fear factor. Fear of the walking dead. Amen. Why don't you why aren't you afraid of God? 
Not in a, a sense of he's going to hurt you, but in reverence. We don't reverence God anymore. There is no fear of the Lord, especially in our country. Our country don't fear God. They don't want nothing to do with God. And it's our fault. It's our fault because the church hasn't stood up. That the church hasn't given instruction. And the instruction that we are given is contrary to the word of God a lot of times. Amen? I love you this morning, church. I want to see God move here about the Bible. I want to see things happen in your lives. I want to see your children come to the house of God. I want to see your mom and daddy in the house of God. I want to see your brothers and your sisters saved. Young, young youth, I want them to come in and know the things of God because the world sure is teaching them everything else. Yeah. It's time we start fearing God. It's time we come to church. It's time we do what we need to do. Amen? Amen. I love you, church. It says, is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. You got to humble yourself. God said he doesn't like a proud look. He hates a proud look. Amen? A lot of times we're too proud to shout. We're too proud to pray. We're too proud to do all these other things because we want to do what's on our own heart. Not what's on God's heart. We don't fear him. And when you don't fear him, you don't love him. You know, I feared my daddy. Why? Because he'd take me outside and pull my pants down and wear my little butt out. That's right. He did, y'all. And I'm a better man for it. Amen. Sometimes the Lord's just going to have to pull your little pants down and put his hand on your hind. Amen? Amen? But we should welcome him. Why? Because he loves us. And it's going to help us. I don't want you to live a wicked life. I don't want you to live a life of sin. I want you to be a righteous man. I want you to be a righteous woman. I want you to fear the Lord. I want you to love the one that's sitting beside you. I want you to love the church. I want you to love the souls. I want you to preach to them. I want you to tell the ones that they need Jesus. I want to see our church grow. I want to see you grow. I want to be with you in heaven. We need to do what we're supposed to do. This morning, if you're living a wicked life, a life of sin, and you feel far from God, it's because you are. That's right. Because he's not close, and he's not in fellowship with a sinful man or a sinful woman. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. I want you to analyze yourself. I want you to analyze your ways, your actions. Are they righteous? Are they righteous? And I want you to start praying for our services. I want you to start praying that souls will come to the house of God. Not for our church name. Not for a body to fill the seat. Not for a number, not for an offering, but for a soul to come to Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. Yes. We're not here for money. Amen? Amen? We're not here for a number. We're here to see souls saved. The last entry in my granddaddy's journal was 5,599 souls that had made a decision for Jesus Christ. That's one man. One man. What if we do it in unity? As a whole church. What if we would do our part. And pray for our services. Pray for the people around us. Pray for our neighbors here. And fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Amen. I love you this morning. Will you stand with me today? I know my message was a little different today. But God laid it on my heart. And I couldn't preach nothing else. And I want to be a servant of the Almighty. I want to do what he called me to do. And by his mercy and his grace, that's what I'm going to do. I plan on preaching until the day I die. I 
plan on being with you in heaven. But if you're living a life that ain't right, you ain't going to be there. I don't want to see that for you. Everybody's head bowed, everybody praying. I'm going to pray over us today. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Lord, I don't want to be far from you, but I want to be real close. Lord, I want to be so close that I recognize your voice and I can hear it. Lord, I want to feel you moving in my life and I want to see the glory of God. Lord, I pray for Bethel Bible Church as a whole for every soul that's in here. Lord, I know I don't stand before a congregation. I don't stand before a multitude. But I stand before souls. Lord, I God, I ask right now that you would move into our hearts. That you would move into our spirit. That you would draw out all the darkness. I ask, Lord God, that when we walk in our everyday life, that we would have a light in our eyes. That we would have joy in our hearts. That our bones would be fat from the good report. And that we could give a good report, Lord. I ask that we would strive for righteousness. I ask, Lord God, that we would be men and women of integrity when no one else is around. I ask, Lord God, that we can live our lives according to your word, even when it's hard. Lord, I ask for the ones who have backslidden, the ones that are doing things that ain't right. Lord, I ask that you would move in and that you would convict them. Convict us today. Help us, Lord God. Help us. We need your mercy and we need your grace. We're nothing without you. Lord, I thank you for where you brought us from. For each person in here, each soul, I thank you for where you brought us from already. Lord God, I ask that you would move and that you would keep on working. Lord, I ask that you would kill the sin in us. That you would slay it. That you would crucify it. And we would purge ourselves. Lord God, I ask that you would create in us a praying heart. That we would pray for our church. That we would pray for our brothers and our sisters in Christ that we would pray for our, each other's families. And Lord God, that we could hold one another up and take them to your throne and take them boldly. Lord, I pray that we would fear you. I pray, Lord God, for our country. I pray for a renewal in our country. I pray, Lord God, that you would move over all of our leaders. No matter what they have done, no matter what they're doing, I ask, Lord God, that you would move in on them. Lord God, that you would seize them. That you would apprehend them like you've done me. Lord, I ask that you would touch our families, each and every one, that you would bless us, that you would send your angels to encamp around about us. Lord, I pray for our youth. I pray for these babies in this church, Father, that you would keep them while they go to school, that you would keep them from the evil of this world, that, Lord God, that you would move in and that you would protect them and that you would keep them in your will and that they would know that you love them and you keep them in their house, Lord. Lord, I pray for the fathers and the mothers. Lord, I pray that you would let them live a, a decent life, that you would put it in their hearts and give them the willpower, give them the mental ability to live a life for you. And as for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord. I pray that this will be our whole prayer. Lord, I, I ask in Jesus' name that you would forgive us of our sins. For each one of our sins. Lord, I pray on behalf of all of us this morning that you would forgive us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.